All right, up next we have Capricorn rising and sun. This Aries solar eclipse happening on April 8th is occurring in your fourth house. So what does this mean? What's interesting about this eclipse is that it's exactly conjunct Chiron. And Chiron is an asteroid that has to deal with our wounding from childhood or even a past life. With this being an Aries, for many of us, we can have wounding around the masculine energy, around having proper boundaries, around saying no, asserting ourselves, going after what we want, feeling deserving and confident to have what we desire. Um, basically anything kind of with a spinoff around this masculine energy and going after what we want. So with this being in the fourth house, I feel like this could be a much more emotional time for you where those connections to emotions from the past related to your worthiness, related to your independence, related to your ability to deserve or have what you want, those things can come up right now. And it's helping you process some of those things so that you can move forward and not feel like, again, like you don't deserve it or like you can't have it or whatever. So it's a very interesting time to look back on what was I taught around my sense of value and worth and what I, again, my goals, like did, was I encouraged? Was I told that I can absolutely have it, that I can do it, that I can be it, that I can whatever? Um, or was that somehow discouraged? And it doesn't have to be discouraged by active communication. It could be discouraged by simply your family not representing that energy to you or representing a toxic masculine energy, a negative masculine energy where Aries energy could have been overly selfish, not considering how its impact on other people or could have been overly impulsive or angry. And so maybe you have trouble with your own anger and your own no and your own desires because maybe other people around you and your family didn't have any cap on those desires. So it's our relationship with this passion and this aggression and this um, assertiveness that we're needing to heal at this time and how that again connects to your past is very important. Um, I see this with the bridge here, like I pulled this card for you and I feel like there's something here with maybe even passed on loved ones or connecting current events in the way that you feel currently to how you used to feel as a kid or what had happened in that age of your life um, long ago. And so there's some kind of connection here with the bridge from the present to the past with this being an eclipse in the fourth house of our ancestry, our home, our family, our past, our living place. Um, and so I feel like, again, the emotions that come up now are very much from old stories and it's really worth processing your relationship with men or the masculine energy that I described and how it connects to the way that you grew up. We also have Mercury retrograde conjunct this eclipse so it could indicate that people from the past come and talk to you or situations and things that you felt like were over come back up so that you can address them with people. Um, there could be just thoughts and events and situations that um, remind you of old things or that you have to go back and kind of address. So there's a sense of revisiting the past again through Mercury retrograde, through Chiron, and even through Mars being conjunct Saturn. What Mars is the ruler of this eclipse and Saturn is it's sitting next to Saturn and Saturn is a planet of time. So oftentimes, again, issues from the past will come back up when we have Saturn involved in an eclipse like this. So I'm getting the sense that you guys are trying to unburden yourself from that past so that you can have maybe some kind of new emotional beginning. Maybe you're wanting to feel more emotionally stable. Maybe you're wanting to buy a new house or move somewhere new or have some changes to your family. And in order to have this reset, in order to have this kind of new beginning, you're also going to need to address what has been that can come back up at this time as you're trying to break new ground. Mars, the ruler of this eclipse, is in your third house, as I mentioned, conjunct Saturn in Pisces. And so you might also feel like you have some kind of new beginning related to the third house, which could be you deciding that you want to, again, move somewhere new. The third house tends to have, you know, energy around traveling, not just going somewhere, but also like 
moving about. Um, so you might find that you're interested in traveling, you're interested in learning something new. Uh, maybe you want to write a book, maybe you want to share some experiences that you have had um, in that book around your family past. But there's basically our third house energy can be the way that we connect um, either through travel, information, relationships. There's a sense of like a neural network basically. So you might want to have a new beginning in either of these areas or both. And ultimately, I feel like, again, as long as you can address the energy around um, the any wounds that you have around the masculine energy, it's going to help you solidify some of the things that you want. I think something else that you're going to have to address is with Mars and Saturn being in the third house is really being aware of your own mindset because this can be a gift and it can also be a curse. Mars and Saturn together can be very disciplined. It can be, um, you know, cautious and, and knowing what we need to do step by step to get to where we're wanting to go. Um, but when, when Mars is too heavily influenced by Saturn, it can start to hold us back. It can start to make us feel like we have heavy ankle weights that we are taking steps very slowly. We're doubting the steps that we're taking. Uh, we're being overly pessimistic to ourselves. Um, so that would be the negative sign of Mars and Saturn together. And this being an area of mindset and movement, it again can delay your progress and make you a little bit more pessimistic or depressed with a placement like this if you are not using this placement to your advantage or using it wisely for letting it take over you. And that sometimes is possible with, you know, Pisces energy. We can become victim to things. And so we want to find our personal empowerment in this. And this is, again, one of the reasons why we have to process some of this masculine energy. That's where we find a lot of our strength and our power and our assertiveness and our ability to fight back, even if it's against our own negative thoughts. And so healing your relationship with that is a big part of how you will change your mindset and how you will continue to move forward in a very productive way and harness this Saturn energy to, again, be disciplined, be um, authoritative, and be cautious and have this practical plan to really make things succeed. So yeah, I'm getting the sense of like, you can persevere, which is very much what the Seven of Wands is. Like, you can persevere, you can uh, do hard things. <laughs> I think that's even a quote from somebody. Yes, you can do hard things. Um, but you first have to feel like you are tapped into and healing, uh, healing in progress. It doesn't have to be complete, but first tapped into and healing some of that masculine energy in order to really, um, have the full endurance and perseverance. You are a Capricorn, so you have access to that regardless, but you will get more bang for your buck during this eclipse if you are, willing to look into the past and address some of those things that could be there. Um, I also pulled the six of pentacles in the moon. So I feel like, again, the moon is always an indicator that there's things that we don't see. There's parts of this uh, scenario that have not fully unfolded yet. There's deep emotions that are influencing us. Again, stuff from the past that could be coming up and influencing us. The moon represents things that operate in the shadows of our life but are very much responsible for how we take action today and so ultimately I feel like this moon card is again highlighting how important it is if you're wanting to start a family buy a house make a move or just feel emotionally strong and certain of oneself um, and and make big moves in our life in order for that to happen you first have to address the things that have been kind of bubbling underneath the surface that are influencing you without maybe your full awareness which is very much an eclipse in the fourth house it can make you aware of a lot of things that have influenced you from your family from your past from your ancestral line and help you kind of take your power back and own some of those things address some of those things so that you can, again, move forward, move, move, move. I feel like that's like the biggest thing here um, with Mars being in the third house. I also pulled the six of pentacles. So I feel like there's a little bit of a story here for some of you guys around 
having to defend or fight for what you deserve. Because I pulled the Seven of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. The Seven of Wands can feel like people are coming at you, people want what you have, or people are challenging you, or situations are challenging you, and you're having to defend or protect yourself. You're having to prove your worthiness with the Six of Pentacles. So I feel like there's something in your life where there may be an association or relationship with the masculine energy where you feel this way. You feel like you have to work hard or things have to be difficult or you have to prove yourself or you have to protect yourself or defend yourself. And I think there's healing also around that that needs to come into play emotionally. Again, connected to our past, connected to our family. What was what did our parents teach us? What was their life like? You know, did they have to work super hard and make no money? That could then instill this in us that we have to work really, really hard and we might not even get what we deserve. So there's a sense of feeling like, I feel like it's the opposite of entitlement. And I don't know what that word would be, but I feel like you guys with this energy, it's almost like we're needing to work on becoming more entitled, more confident, more full of our own um, selves in a way of like, we really deserve this. We, um, we are, we've been working for this. I can see myself like living up to this potential with this I card. It's like I have the vision for what I really can achieve and I deserve it. I feel like I can have it. Um, yeah, it's like not recognizing where there, there might be an addiction to a struggle or where there might be like overwork or imbalance um, and trying to bring your life more into a harmony of... Yeah, I pulled this I pulled this microbiome which I think has to do with this. Like if you think about the gut microbiome, if we feed too much of the bad bacteria with things like processed sugar or even bread, um we can disrupt the whole balance of our gut and our stomach and there's actually a lot of um hormones and things and nerves and is there nerves? I can't I can't remember what I was going to from my class, but anyway, there's hormones that are released into the gut, it is considered our second brain. And that's for a reason because we have things that greatly affect the rest of our body from our gut. And so it's almost like there can be things in your life where you can feed the bad ideas, the bad bacteria through overwork, feeling like you're not doing good enough or um, being too hard on yourself or whatever that is, it's going to be individual to you, but you can feed the bad bacteria through your thoughts, Mars and Saturn and third house, um, or through even actions that you're doing and cycles that you're perpetuating. And that can throw off your whole entire life just by having a little bit of that food consistently, it can throw off your whole life. So being mindful of like the little changes in our day to day that can enhance greater harmony. So maybe it's meditating, maybe it's affirmations, maybe it's, um, you know, indulging in a bath and good dinner for yourself and taking some time off of work for vacation. There's a sense of creating balance and feeling like you really deserve rest, which I think is important for an eclipse in the fourth house. The fourth house is is where we, the fourth and 12th house can have to deal with like rest, taking it easy, having some time to be by ourselves. Um, and again, I think this masculine energy, if there's toxic masculine energy, if work really hard and never rest and go out and get life by the horns, like that can also be an energy that you have to address and process. So I feel like there's, again, this bridge that I mentioned earlier, there's this bridge between two polarities of going very hard and going too little and resting too much. So it's like, how can we create a bridge and walk in between them? How can we connect these two, um, you know, intense opposites? You guys are also having Venus in Aries in the fourth house conjunct Neptune. So we also have to be aware of, again, this is where we can be like overindulgent with things. We can become too idealistic. We can um, yeah, just like do what we want to do in the moment and not think about the repercussions. So we also don't want to go to that extreme either. We want to indulge in that Venus aspect through rest, through play, through creativity, but also keeping in mind the general balance of your life. So I think, um, kind of 
investigating your relationship with that can be very helpful. But yeah, I think that there's kind of a lot of messages here for you guys. But a lot of this is examining your relationship with action, with the masculine energy that I keep mentioning, and with your own mindset and using the right habits and things to nurture yourself so that you can create more of a balance and harmony in your life and truly feel like you can live up to your potential without having the difficulties, the struggles or whatever along the way in order to get there. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn. If this resonates or if you want to share with me anything about your eclipse experience, I would love to hear that down below. If you want a reading from me, check me out at CosmicClarityAstrology.com. I will link that in the description box. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends and have a beautiful day. Bye.